Prime Minister, if things go well with the BC decriminalization, would you consider decriminalizing some of our drugs nationally to deal with the crisis? I think every step of the way we need to make sure that A, we're following science and data, and that's exactly what we're doing. There's been long calls to look at decriminalization. Hello there. I've just got a quick question for you. Um, my name is Kerry Diot. Uh, we're doing a bit of a survey. A couple of years back, the federal Liberal government said that they would no longer, they're telling Crown prosecutors not to charge people for possessing hard drugs like crack cocaine, meth, fentanyl, heroin. What do you think about that? I don't know because I don't do any of those drugs. I just, I, I think it's uh, not a good thing to have it or anything in the community or in the cities. I'm from a small community. Having that kind of stuff is damaging to families. And Hi, it's Carrie Diot here for Rebel News in downtown Edmonton. I'm here getting some reaction to some interesting news that a lot of Canadians might not know. About two years ago, the federal Liberal government quietly told Crown prosecutors not to charge people who possess hard drugs. That includes meth, cocaine, crack cocaine, fentanyl, and heroin. So we're getting some very interesting reaction to that fact. Of course, we've already heard uh, cities like Toronto and Edmonton interested in taking this on as well. We're going to work with them and try to make sure every step of the way that as and if we move forward, it is not just a single solution, that it is a, a, a full wraparound approach like we're trying to create in BC. Hello there. Can you help me out for one quick second? I'm uh, with Rebel News, Kerry Diot. Um, we've uh, found out that the federal government has quietly said that, is, uh, that the Crown prosecutors will not be charging people with possession of drugs like crack cocaine, meth, fentanyl, and heroin. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think that's great. I think drugs are bad and hard drugs are very bad. So if people have them, they probably shouldn't. That's, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. How does that make you feel that they're doing that? Um, I don't know. I think it'd be good if there were negative consequences for people having those kinds of things to try and stop people from having them, to, you know, make the city a safer place to be walkable and yeah, for just like regular everyday people would be safer. I'm totally against it. I mean, the drug is an epidemic in our society. Uh, we need to throw more resources on curing people, I think, rather than just letting them go and making them or enabling them in, in per se. So um, that's what all I have to say on that. Well, it's a difficult proposition, but uh, I don't know, it's hard to say. I, I, I feel conflicted about it. <laughs> actually, because I know that there are some good reasons for it, but I also know that it can be problematic. So um, I honestly can't say definitively one way or the other how I feel about that, but yeah. I don't know because I don't do any of those drugs. I just, I, I think it's uh, not a good thing to have it or anything in the community or in the cities. I'm from a small community. Having that kind of stuff is damaging to families. And uh, well, I'm from Norway, so it's difficult to say. <laughs> I really haven't followed the process here. Sorry. What do they do in Norway? Uh, well, all drugs are legal in Norway, so it's a really different setup. Okay, well, welcome to Canada. Thank you. be honest with you, um, I'm actually taking a course in college dealing with uh, mix, uh, addictions and mental health. So I'm going through that same recovery. Um, anything to do with drugs, uh, has not been a very good beneficial um, reactions to uh, to anybody that are using them. And I believe the stronger the drugs that come out, the more troubles we're going to have with mental health and mental uh, abilities and disabilities working with people that are trying to get off the drugs. And um, I think the most important thing is that they have resources um, and uh, for myself, uh, I am a person that um, doesn't really take too much to drugs. I've been experiencing them 
but they have led me nowhere but to a place where I have to go and return. So I do not have much um, understanding in a lot of drugs, and that's the reason why I think uh, I don't think too much about where it's coming from, but how they're looking after it. And uh, um, with other types of drugs like um, psychotic education or mental health, well, trying to uh, find a way to make it a little better for like myself, who's been on it for 25 years. I would like to have a, a remission and um, I would like to sit down in the next little while and find out and make a decision what is the best thing to do. Um, because this is related to my own addiction over the past 20 years where I've actually been sober, actually with addictions, not so much alcohol, but drugs. And um, this medication was for that reason. And right now I am, uh, I am um, trying to get off and find out if that, that's something I can do in the community and with others. You know, like different people, they, they get involved in those kind of stuff. So they either have some uh, problems that they have been using it for exports for quite a long time. So I think it, they should be able to, you know, to, I mean, to charge each individual, not just like if you have that and then the, we are going to charge you or blanket that not all of people who are using that kind of stuff, then there will be no consequences. You know, so I think it is very harmful to everybody and their families and even the person that is using it. So I think, uh, you know, most people probably they need some treatment. So I think that should be considered. And then also, like if you see now what has happened so so many years before, people used to get charged with possessing marijuana. And then what happened now? Why you can now they are now legalized and all kind of stuff. So like. I think something something different needs to be done, but uh, to say not that people or I think uh, it's just like letting people to abuse themselves and all that kind of stuff. And letting people abuse themselves is not good, obviously. Of course, I mean because it's not only harmful to the, that person. What about the families? The families are the ones who are going to suffer when the person dies. Even when he's dead, that's fine. You know, but what about the families? What about uh, the medical uh, attention that they will require maybe during that period? It's a lot of money, right? Well, you could see that it's a bankrupt or downtown because when these people self-medicate, which is uh, going against the grain and their frontal lobes don't function very well, they plug up the systems, which startings hospitals. So if your mother needs a surgery, or has COVID, they can't be addressed because they're dealing with people who overdosed and they're repeat offenders. And uh, they put a huge strain on the system, but more so they're taken away for our day-to-day -day means of providing a living as in the homeless who are on uh, self-medication are scaring people away from downtown. And they're assaulting business owners and uh, patients outside my clinic. They come into the buildings high. You can't kick them out because when they're on this drugs, they have delirium fits and you can get in a lot of trouble or hurt yourself. They come into our businesses and steal. And um, it's just not a pretty sight, not to mention they leave their discarded needles behind, their vomit, their feces, their uh, clothing, their food and quite commonly they'll lean against our doors and uh, pass out or we'll pick a fight if we ask them to leave. So um, those are the good days. The bad days is when they smash in your window. You've had this experience and you've had this issue for a long time here, right? The COVID, yeah, it's pretty much when, you know, as you said, when they want to do a soft stance and, uh, you know, the law enforcement said our hands are tied and uh, if their hands are tied, the ones are not, are causing the havoc. So it's been pretty horrible. We've lost a generation almost with the pandemic and uh, the crime that flourished with it. This has had a big impact on your business, hasn't it? It's had a huge impact. Uh, females don't feel safe coming downtown, myself. I never know which day that I'm gonna get in a fight with a homeless person. 
and I've had fights with them. Um, it's just, it's, you just never know. How I start my day, if you can hear music in the background, if I hear music in my clinic, that means I'm not broken into. And then if I see the right light coming through the door, that means my door's not been kicked in. Because of all the crime, all the investors don't want to come downtown anymore. And so you said, what did you say about your clinic again? Well, I've, I've, um, I've outgrown my clinic with my skills. I need a bigger space, but uh, investors are scared to come downtown because of all unruliness of crime. Now, we still have the cheapest downtown core in Canada, and it's very affordable, but these people have just made it unfriendly to obtain proper commerce. So there you have it, some strong reaction, especially from the business community on news that the possession of hard drugs are not generally being prosecuted in Canada. For more news just like this, go to rebelnews.com.